Up next on Fantasia the Talk Show, we have Kim Bora with House of Hummingbird. She's the writer and director, and I'm really happy to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I really fell in love with your movie. It's a kind of a coming-of-age film set in the 90s in South Korea. Could you explain a little bit uh, the process of putting this story together and whether or not it is based at all on your experiences? Um, yeah, it was based on my experience in the beginning, but it is a fiction in the end. Uh, I started from my nightmare that I had when I was in graduate school. Uh, so when I did an MFA in New York, I started to have this dream about my middle school period uh, in the dream. So I had to go to middle school for three years, although in real life I was a graduate student. In the dream, I had to go again, and then it felt like nightmare. And I started to write down what happened during the period to revisit the trauma or memories that I was afraid to revisit. So the beginning was uh, started that way. And, and then I finished my first draft in 2013. Uh, so it, it's been a long journey. Uh, it wasn't just filmmaking, but more of you know, making peace with the past and like trying to revisit things or like memories that I didn't really want to revisit, mm -hmm. yeah. And what about the nightmare was so striking to you? Well, it was a simple nightmare, simple dream, but like it, tells, it told a lot of things about the emotion that I had mm -hmm. about the period. I mean, like going back to middle school, uh, it, going back to middle school would make me feel that way, like feel that scared. I thought there's something going on underneath and around the period. So I thought, okay, I should revisit and like maybe make a film about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or I wasn't thinking about making it from the very beginning, but uh, I thought um, it would be interesting to explore the memories. And then I wrote the first draft a few years later after I had the dream. And was it always important for you to keep it in the 1990s? Yeah, the reason that I set the period that way was because that year was very uh, pivotal or transformative year for Korea because mm -hmm. that bridge, Songsu Bridge collapse was a huge tragic event for us. And that was kind of wake up for South Korea to be aware of where we were there that at the time. And we realized that we have to be more aware of safety and human being and what it means to be human beings rather than just developing our country fast. Yeah, so, and then also I was in middle school in 1994, so I wanted to bring that era to the film. And also this film is about the main character Uni's coming of age, but also about South Korea's coming of age uh, back then in 90s because 90 is the period that my country was like trying really hard to be a developed country from the underdeveloped country. So that's like an in-between period for us. And I thought that era is very important to you know touch upon. Uh, to talk about a lot of issues that we still have. I mean, I think it translated very well because a lot of the events are things that I wasn't familiar with or mm -hmm. didn't realize all happened at once. Mm -hmm. And I feel the resonance of all of those incidents very well. Mm -hmm. um, did you encounter any particular challenges in recreating that era? Yeah, um, we did a lot of research yeah. about the era. Although I <laughs> lived in Korea, and I remember a lot of it, but like, like creating, recreating that era needs a lot of effort and time. Like we did a lot of researching and you know, we had to spend a lot of time to find 90 looking location mm -hmm. and also like small props um, here and there. It was very difficult to find. Like for example, the yellow Benetton bag, yeah. it, it was like kind of symbol of the neighborhood <laughs> and also all middle school girls, like a lot of middle school girls in that era really wanted to have that yellow Bennett Dong bag yeah. for some reason. Uh, and then it was so hard to find the bag and we had to really find like personal seller that has that bag. So that sort of little details took time. 
but I'm glad our team made effort and like were able to make and recreate the era well with that low budget. Yeah. I mean, and it looks great. And I mean, the bag itself feels like such a bridge between through the whole film. It mm. just stands out so beautifully in the oh, color. I, I always think of yellow as hope in a little way, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, um, I like the color. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, are you working on any other projects right now? I mean, this film has been quite successful. It uh, was it won a lot of awards at Tribeca, and I mm -hmm. think it's touching a lot of people. Do you have any new projects? Well, yeah, I have some projects in my mind, and but I think um, I still have to develop the script. Uh, but my next film will be also about women and minorities, and I al always want to, you know, speak about uh, voices that are not heard yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Kim. It's been a pleasure having you. Um, director and writer of House of Hummingbird, be sure to subscribe to Fantasia the Talk Show on YouTube. Thank you. It was my first time that I get like standing ovation. I feel thankful because well that means they like the film, they love the film and they understand it. And as a filmmaker you make film to reach out to others. You make film to have mutual understanding with others. And I guess for me that's the like sole reason that I make and create something new. So when there is an understanding, I guess I feel very connected to the audiences. Yeah.